Hey there, everyone. This is Nat Bridger, and you are listening to the Vegas Confessions podcast. Didn't we go to my favorite dive bar before that? We went yeah. to Double Down. Double Down Saloon. Yeah, we had some ash juice. I am all about ash juice. Yeah. <laughs> I need to go check that room. There's like a dead guy in the in the bed. And the, the lady at the counter says, well, we'll call housekeeping. What's <laughs> housekeeping? Jay's never met an asshole he didn't like. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the guy at third base at the blackjack table I was at last, who was obviously trying to keep a high-low count, but was mouthing the numbers as the cards were being oh, turned geez. over. Be careful what you say, because we can have you whacked. Hey, I'm Nicky Furnitz, and you're listening to the Vegas Confessions Podcast. What is up, folks, and welcome back to the Vegas Confessions Podcast, episode 98. In this episode, I'm going to be recapping some events that's happened while I've been in Las Vegas as we are working in Las Vegas this summer. Our daughter's first crap roll we're going to cover at Alice Island. Kelly, how fun was that? It was fun. She had was, a good time. Oh, my God. Uh, just under an hour. We're going to get to it, but damn, the people at the table, Alice Island environment, it was just one of those nights that, yeah, yeah it was too much fun. We had family come into town. We did something new for the first time at staying at Red Rock. There's just a lot of stuff going on over these past few weeks. We've had our second oldest graduated high school, just a lot. And so it's been really hard to get some recording time in. But guys, this is going to be a fun episode. We're going to give you guys a lot of the highlights that we've done with the family. And again, this being a live episode from Las Vegas, there's noise in the background. We are at the plaza and we are right next to Fremont Street. So you're going to have to take what you can get on this episode. <laughs> so with that being said, the first thing we're going to jump into is some shout outs. I got to give a huge shout out to all of our following Patreon members who support this podcast and keep it free for us to do. And again, much love to you guys for continually supporting us while we're doing all this transition. We are two weeks away from our huge release of what we've been working on these last six months. Damn, there's so much coming. Huge shout out to Renee, Mitch, Jay, Jack, Jana, Mike, Eric, David, Taylor, Rodney, Michael, Scott, Travis, Rob, Saul, Neil, Scott and Lisa, Graham from the Chef Demoni podcast. And our newest one to add to the list, babe, is going to be Bobby G. He just jumped on board oh, this week. Yeah, nice. I just saw that. It's <laughs> too cool. And I have to get into a little bit of the stories of Bobby G. But guys, thank you so much for your continued support. It does mean a lot been a crap load of stuff i'm jay if you're new around here my co-host is my beautiful wife kelly babe how fun has this damn trip been it's been a, it's been one for the books yeah okay so the first thing we'll cover is i came into town right on time of the whole 360 vegas vacation event which is always fun to you know see friends and other podcasters were in a town i mean graham from the chef demoni podcast it was nice to meet him and his wife babe so much fun i, I could not say enough nice things about them um the 360 crew held an amazing event they had this which I thought was really neat is they did like a pub crawl through the arts district. And you know how much we like going to the arts district, right? but they had different breweries, which was cool. Cause I hadn't been to a lot of these places and they did give them a heads up in advance. So they were ready for the group that was going to show up. And we went to these different breweries and I thought that was so fun. Just walking as a group to yeah. the next place down, you know, to the arts. It yeah, it was so much fun. And, places that majority of people probably wouldn't have visited while they were in town. So it was cool to get that experience with them and then be like, hey, this is neat. I can see myself. Everybody in the group besides, I think, maybe four of us had never been to the arts district. So really? it was cool for yeah. them to be like, this is what everybody's talking about. This right. is away from the strip in between downtown area that everybody's been talking about. And I know I mentioned Graham now a few times, but he stayed at the English hotel okay. and really liked it. So it was really cool to chat with him and get his feel for the newest place. One of the newest places in town. That's not so, you know, that's strip vibe or downtown. Right. It's its own, it's own, it's thing. its own entity. It really yeah. is. 
and they have a really kick-ass restaurant inside which i think we should visit as well it's a little pricey but yeah. very nice um let's cover why we're here obviously we're working we're getting really close to our release date with what we're working on and everything that's coming to the table. We've been putting miles in every day as far as walking around through Vegas. Now, this trip, we've been visiting every casino now. So yeah. we've covered all the downtown casinos yep. and did all of our work that we had to do there. And now we've what, ventured out to GVR yep. and now working our way back to the Strip. And we're gonna hit some of those outside properties like Arizona Charlie's and stuff. But we are on the go every day. We did Venetian, we did Aria, we did a lot of these strip properties where we're essentially just walking around and <laughs> tiring ourselves out. This is one of the first trips where we've taken naps. <laughs> 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 Obviously, we've been in town and we've brought our daughter who's off for school this summer and she wanted to come and work and make a little extra money. She right? turned 21 in February, so, so this is her first adult trip where she can actually partake in you know whatever Everything. she wants right. in, in vegas and it's really cool because we get to take her with us and right off we always tell her about these different right. places and now she gets to see it right and now that she's working and listening to different podcasts and watching youtube and stuff she's yeah we would be walking around and she'd be like oh i heard about this yes place. oh i heard about this place. And, and me i couldn't be any more proud i'm like oh that's <laughs> awesome right yeah so it's so cool to see her start to catch on to some of these places and we she's done a few new things and we've done some things with her like take her through fremont street and yeah. you know explore and try these restaurants yeah but the one or the two key things with her is the first one I'll get to will be she did get to explore and check out a nightclub and a big shout mm -hmm. out to Mark, who was just on the podcast Absolutely, the last yeah, episode her up. when he said, hey, if you guys want to check something out, reach out. And it was exactly that. I reached out. I text him. He texted a friend. They came back with me with so many options right. for her. Hey, you said you, you were surprised. I was. And they were like. I was like over the top with. The, Here's what you whatever can do. Whatever you need. What, yes. Yes. So again, guys, these awesome. people text me. They gave me a list that's basically of every club, nightclub, day club, strip club, anything you can think of to do in town. So our daughter had access to anything. Well, I think she you, to it do. was just an eye opener of really what. Uh, business and science this and is was, yes. you know yeah. of you know promoting the day clubs and night clubs and you know what goes into putting yeah. somebody on the guest list yeah. or you know what they yeah. have to do to get in you know like there it's a whole yeah separate entity and of, you got you know, to see things. the list and mm -hmm. like it was every place possible you can think yeah. of in town and there is little and it really about, is crazy like dress code for yes, each one or you know yes. be it be here by this time mm -hmm. and you know yeah and, i mean and because and i think it's foreign to us because we haven't really right. dove into right. any of that that's not 100%. really our forte right we are more casino aficionados hotel mm -hmm. that's what we like to do yeah um so the whole day club nightclub scene is really an eye-opener and it was nice to get to know about some of it it was cool babe that i reached out through one text he's like you know what let me get my boss to take care of you the boss texts me back and, and you end like, up knowing him yeah right? yeah or, i end up yeah. knowing a friend of a friend and he's like yeah. hey these are our options let me know what she wants to do we'll take care of her make sure she has a good time right like dude that's awesome and yeah they i basically told her hey she picks a place let us know and that happened. She picked her place. She ended up choosing Tao at yeah. Venetian. And her and her cousins went down there to go check it out for a few hours. Mm -hmm. And she said she had a good time. It was a lot to take in, a lot going on, <laughs> yeah. right? Which is expected. And I think it was cool that she got to go with her cousins rather than us, you know? Oh, yeah. We, I mean, I don't... We could care less for that type of thing. Right. But, I mean, it would be cool to see, but... 15 minutes of it and we'd probably be okay with all right cool we got to right. see it let's move on let's go check out the casino and it, was a typical, <laughs> it was a it was a typical 21 year old experience because yes. you know she please let's talk about it yeah because <laughs> you know she's she's a cute young girl like yes. you know and so when her friends came in town and said hey let's do the nightclub she's like oh i gotta go grab something so she just got this black dress and you know yes. it wasn't too crazy mm -hmm. you know compared to vegas mm -hmm. too revealing or anything but she got heels because that's what you wear with the dress right and so she's trying to walk in these brand new heels just to go meet her cousins and they, they were staying at circus circus of all places yeah and so 
we go to drop her off in the front on Las Vegas Boulevard, Boulevard yeah. and she's at the hotel lobby in the very back of the hotel. Right. So of course I walk with her just to make sure she gets to the cousins okay, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And literally, I, I had asked her a few times, like, do you want to take my flip flops just in case? You know, yeah. and she's like, I don't know. And of course, you know, mistake one, brand new shoes. She had put lotion on her feet right before she put her heels on. <laughs> so she's slipping like yeah. every third step going, oh mom, like, and so we get halfway down the hotel lobby at Circus Circus, which is pretty long yeah. if you've been there. And she looked at me, she's like, I think I do need those flip flops. And I'm wearing the flip flops, mind you. <laughs> so I take them off, <laughs> give them to her. She's then now carrying her heels and I am in my bare feet. <laughs> so, <laughs> I guess that's the hotel to do it. No, if you're gonna go bare feet, yeah. that's the hotel. So we go meet meet her. She's waiting at the lobby for for Sydney, and I call Julian. I'm like, you gotta meet me at the back and pick me up. I'm not walking back yeah. through Circus Circus barefooted. Um, so he picks me up, and luckily I had extra shoes in the car, so that was not a problem getting back to the plaza and yeah. doing all that stuff. But she had a great time. You know, they went, they had a good time. She said there's, you know, people, a lot of people there, they did a little bit of dancing. Mm-hmm. She's learned that she's not gonna do heels. She's like, I yeah. got there and half the girls there were in slides. Yeah. Like if I would have known, I could have been comfy. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a live and learn experience, I think, when you go to the day clubs and nightclubs yeah. to see, yeah. you know, and I think over the years they've been more relaxed. Yeah. They just want people there having a good time. Yeah, 100%. Being safe, right. you know. And Let's again, thank you to everybody social media wise. We've been more posting rather than actually doing any kind of like recording. We've been yeah. doing a lot of networking. Like I got something really cool is I got a haircut set up at one of the speakeasies in town here coming up this week. I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff I've yeah. been running across. Oh, you know, I've met um uh, Magic Murray this week and had lunch with him. There's a lot of things going on when I'm telling you this job and networking and there's so many people in town that are involved and so many aspects. Yeah, you had a good time with that. Yeah, it's, it's, there's a lot coming, guys. And over the next weekend, too, I'm going to start sharing more on social media about the job, the details, who I'm working for, the company, what it is, start dropping teaser videos. So make sure you are following on social media. But we are two weeks away from release and it's freaking exciting. And actually, to be here, a part of it is going to be even more exciting to see people's reaction. Yeah. So I'm stoked about that. But, Another one I wanted to mention is, we mentioned earlier, is her first craps roll. We told her, you yeah. know, about how much fun we have on cruise ships and yeah. just in general. She and actually, she had seen it. Yeah, we was went, we say, went on yeah. a cruise. She was 16 at the time. And she'd walked into the casino area with us and she, yeah. you know, she didn't roll and she was kind of like, what are you guys doing before she got kicked out? Right. You know, they're like, she can't be in here. Watch. I said, she's just watching. They're like, no, she can't be in here. Right. Um, so she had seen it before. And so she had, and she was like, I want to roll the dice. Right. Her first craps roll went over 40 minutes. I think they timed yeah, it. Just under, we were just under an hour. And that's what was nice is the table vibe, guys. Yeah, it really was. And, and we'll get to that because we mm-hmm. went to another place too. Too. Yeah, right. And so the table is was full mm-hmm. and she starts rolling and they're just people are encouraging. Yeah, Great right. job. They had no again. idea. No idea. She's first time roller, right? She just jumped in there. There was a guy in between us. He like halfway move. through you had right. asked, you know. No, well, once once it started yeah. getting real hot, like they yeah. started getting loud. Everybody had money on hardway bets. Yes. The table was full of bets, right? Um the table had been cold until we got there. Right. And everybody had been saying. And, and you since, had had a good roll. Right. And since we got in town, we've been having very decent rolls. So I'm like, well, let's roll. Yeah. I had a decent roll, probably 30 minutes, whatever. And then she goes, well, there was a guy in between. In between. Yeah. yeah. He and he had a move. decent roll. He, at first, we were like, okay, well, he just stood in a spot. His name ended up being Kevin, I think. Yeah. And, and he ended up being real nice. He guy, ended yeah. up having a decent mm-hmm. roll as well. So then Sydney gets the dice. And yeah. we tell him, we're like, hey, it's her first time. He's like, oh, shit, <laughs> here we go. Right. I was like, it's our whole reason for bringing her. We're sure this is going to be a blast. Right. She fucking just throws a few times off the table, yeah. hits a couple of people. So the guys were laughing at the other end and <laughs> they can start to tell, like, is she new? And I told them at one yeah. point, I'm like, hey, guys, it's her first time throwing dice. And they're like, she is awesome. Like, they were just having the best time. She and had a great time. Um, some people at the other end of the table made a lot of money. Yeah. And then at the end, when she finally sevened out, um, one guy threw a $25 yeah. chip and she was so excited. Yeah. She's like, thanks. Yeah. It's, and that's, that's what I was trying uh-huh. to 
explain to her like, babe, this is a part of the craps game that makes it that much more fun. Right. This and blackjack, you're playing as a group and it makes it more fun when you're either winning or losing together and yeah. you all understand and that's why you're there. But when you get the highs like this in the game is the most enjoyable moments. Yeah. So, and sometimes when this happens, like you can be chasing that for years, right? I said, so just enjoy it while it happens. And yeah. so again, going back to the social media, the post, everybody, I'm including her in this because everybody's just been so complimentary to her. You know, the uh, the pictures and stuff, she's very beautiful. She looked really nice when she went to the club. Everybody congratulating her on her role. Even when we posted that she was in town with us, everybody's like, hey, happy birthday. Yeah. Right? Buy her a drink. <laughs> and so, yeah, it was really cool. And it's really cool for her to see this side uh, of what, yes. yeah, because we talk about all the time. So she much. knows about the podcast, mm-hmm. but to actually be listening to as part of like your yeah. summer job, like she's hearing what right. we do. Right. That's kind of cool, you know. It, it really is yeah. because it's more of an eye opener for her now. Like when we go to these different places, right? What it's like, all about? What's up, Jay? And she's like, "How do these people know you?" And we've never been to, you know, Red Rock, for example, when we went in the high limit room, which was really cool because you were looking for the casino host. And we're walking through and we're like, well, where's the casino host office? And a pit boss walks over and he's like, hey, how you doing, Jay? I, I'm such an, I'm, I think his name was Matt. He's like, I love, we love your podcast, dude. You and your wife are great. And he realized who you were. <laughs> yeah. He said hi. And, uh, he, and, and that's what's neat is we had never been there really to go besides check it out one right. time. And when we actually got to stay there, let's talk a little more about that too. Um, staying at Red Rock for the first time. That was something else and a, and a neat experience because I thought it was really, really nice. Yes, it was, it was a nice casino. Um, one, one of the drawbacks I'm going to mm-hmm. say I had is we checked in and not knowing really anything about their floor plan. Yeah, the um, hotel layout. The hotel layout, yeah. yeah. Um, she was like, I'm sorry, we don't have anything near the elevator. I'm like, oh, that's cool. You know, no big yeah. deal. We don't think, right? Lit- so you, literally. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, it was about a quarter of a mile from the elevator to our room, right? And even when we like stopped to drop off the bags, it was kind of weird. Like, parking is in a totally different location than like where the valet is. Um, so like we dropped off our bags to go checked in, check in, and then I went and parked my car because we were going to leave again. So I didn't want to valet it. Yeah, and. Then I kind of got lost even just going back and finding the lobby because where you park, like there's a casino floor and then you have to go downstairs again to the lobby, kind of like to the basement or something. But really the walk was horrible. I timed it. The first time with me and Sydney, it was just me and Sydney when we checked in and we had like both of our suitcases and our bags and stuff. I was breaking, literally breaking a sweat, not, no lie, no joke. I was sweating by the time we got to the room because it's carpet, you know, in the hallways and trying to roll all your, your luggage and everything. But I timed it without bags, just a typical elevator to our room. It was over a two minute walk. I want to say like 220 walk from the elevator to our room. And so like by day two, I was like, do I really need to go downstairs <laughs> or, you know, do I, do I really need to go upstairs for that jacker or can I tough it out? Because it's a long ass walk just to go to my room. So that, that would be my, one of my only drawbacks I think yeah. about Red Rock. And, and we looked over on the other side of, we didn't see any elevator that was close. There wasn't, to that there was, end. yeah. No, yeah. Like there, there was an elevator the, to the pool that was probably halfway, half, yeah. but then you had to walk through the pool. And yeah. We, yeah. But for the most part, I remember, yeah, we were joking about, damn, if we're going downstairs, it better be worth it. You right. Know? <laughs> so, like the, the layout was to- really I'm not sure what they were thinking yeah like in every other hotel like you literally the elevator like plaza is perfect because we get off the elevator and there's four different directions you can go and our our room is towards the end of the hall but it's literally six rooms away yeah it's not you know nothing compared to walk in two minutes <laughs> yeah but their their hotel and this hotel are totally different no 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 yeah. It, well, I mean, yeah it's everything it's it's just a different Beast, but yeah. for convenience, it was not convenient where, where our room was. Okay, but did you like the place itself? I like the place. Okay, yeah, I like the place. Casino, you know, yeah, you food you like the food options. I like, like the food options. I like as well. the lobby. The lobby was probably my favorite part. Just nice, just sit there and just hang yeah. out and work. And yeah, I, I like the real. Yeah, it had a very upscale. 
yeah. Mo- you know. Yeah. It, it, atmosphere. it was nice. I don't know why I wanted to say motif. It had a very upscale atmosphere, which is was nice. A nice, just a nice feeling when you walked walked in there, and, and you right. could go downstairs, and there was a a bunch of workspaces. Yeah. Um, to sit, and then there's a bar in there, but mm-hmm. quiet. Yeah. You like that? Yeah, part. I liked it a lot. And there was, I was there a couple of times, but the same place. They had the bowling alley, right. the Kids Quest. They have the uh, arcade. They have the movie theater as well, yeah. and that movie theater has like that 4DX, and they have another one that's just the 3DX, and just so many different things at Red Rock. Yeah. I mean, the pool's beautiful. It was a nice place, I thought. Yeah. But I would say the only con is because we were working the strip in different areas in town, we were driving back yes. and forth. You know what I mean? It's so a good that was 15. Like, yes, good, good 15, 15 20, 20 minutes, minutes, depending on traffic. Yeah. And that was the only downside I thought, besides, you know, the, the long walk is driving back when we were done after a long day, you right. know, and that we're so used to, like yeah. you mentioned, staying at Plaza, being at a certain area that's not too far from everything. Right. Um, and so just, much more convenient. Be like, I'm going to walk downstairs to Walgreens. Or, yeah, or, yeah, you know, yeah, I mean, yeah. It's everything is yeah. right here. But I will say one night when you passed out, I took off and you know I like to wander. Yeah, you wandered up. I went and wandered off into right next door. I left the casino and walked outside to what was downtown Summerlin and had all these different shopping outlets and just store everything. Yeah. It was just really, really nice to just... And I think, I feel like it's part of the station's casino's layout because yeah. when we went to GVR a couple of days ago, it was kind of the same thing. Yeah. Right next door was, you know, a An bunch outlet. of... Yeah. Was it called the district or yeah. something like that? Yeah, we noticed that, yeah. And we haven't stayed in a GVR no. room. No, But my, my personal preference, I love the GVR. Yeah. Yeah. For the, the, if I had to choose between Red Rock and GBR, mm-hmm. which is Green Valley Ranch, um, I think I would choose Green Valley Ranch all day. Yeah. I, I mean, we talked about it yesterday. It's not as far as his drive. And, right. And, but, I mean... I just love the layout. Yeah. It's very similar to Red Rock. Um, they're both very nice yeah. properties. Yeah. The, I love their pool. Yeah. Yeah. That's their the pools. one thing you love over there. Yeah. yeah. Um, I just love the layout of the pool. It was really nice. Um, it just seems like it's more of a property that's thought out a little bit better. I'm not sure. You know what I mean? It wraps around a little bit more. Um, they're both huge properties. Yeah. And it's the same thing. You can go downstairs at GVR and there's an arcade and a, a right. cinema. And as soon as we remember, we went to GVR yesterday and I got lost. Yes, or, the yeah. The first time. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, where the fuck? Yeah. That was some lady yeah. like, where am I going? I was like, Hey, uh, I'm lost. And she's like, where'd you come from? I go, I was at a rewards desk. Now I'm not at a rewards <laughs> desk. She started laughing. <laughs> but that's what I like. I like the scavenger hunt essentially. And right. that's what we got at Venetian Palazzo where we're working in one casino. And then the next thing you know, we take a hallway and we're in another casino and you're like, this is right. not the same place I was just at. Babe, where are you? And we had no idea where we were looking for each other, realizing, oh, we just had to take stairs upstairs or something. Yeah. So, um, and that's a continuing thing with a lot mm-hmm. of the properties we're visiting is there's so many different layers to places or third levels or bottom levels where we're like, hey, we didn't and even we, know some of this existed, and right? And some of it we think is a third level, but it's not. Yeah. You know, like even when we were at GVR a couple of days ago yeah. and we asked the guy, we were like, so is this your first, or your, this your second floor? We were on yeah. the casino floor and he's like, well, not really. Cause look, if you look out this way, cause it's on a hill. Yeah, right. He's like, if you look out those doors, look, there's the street. Right. He he's like, so we call it, what do you say? Like, oh, we call it casino floor yes. and theater and, floor. Right. So right. they call their first floor, which is, what, I would call the theaters. basement or something, yeah, you know, like, level, yeah. and so that's how they yeah. differentiate. They because call it casino floor and yeah. Yeah. Theater floor. And there's a lot of places that do Mm -hmm. that. Yeah. So, you know, things can be a little confusing. That's why I'm a proponent of stop and ask. Yeah. There are so many workers at each casino. I have no problem saying, where is this at? And what's nice is like that gentleman, for example, at GVR, when we were like lost. And he was super helpful. It's always weary when I tell him, oh, I'm taking pictures or getting information about your business. Casinos genuinely don't like that. And it was cool. But I told him like, like, hey, dude, I'm here basically updating your stuff for things up to date. According to Google, this is what I have. I need to know what floor I'm on. And he's like, <laughs> oh, dude, this is what I'm doing. Bam, bam, bam. And I'm like, yeah. oh, OK, well, now I got more information. He's like, I like that you're here helping. Yeah. I was like, dude, let me let, let, let me give you more in detail. Yeah. While we're doing it. He 
he's like, really? I like it even more now. I was like, yeah. So that was really cool. And the interaction with the different places and properties reaction to what we're working on sometimes is really neat too, because a lot of the times when people think of taking pictures right. or stuff in casinos, a lot of people take that as a negative connotation, like, oh, it's not supposed to happen. Right. You're not able to do it. Well, it depends on what areas right. in the casino and what, and what you're doing. Yeah. And the approach, right? If, yeah. casino, if the security walks up to you, if you look rude, shady, they're going to yeah. think you're I mean, doing I something shady. I look shady and I always look like I'm doing something shady. But when they get to talk to me and they realize, oh, this guy's OK, he's, he's a benefit. Yeah. <laughs> you look shady. Yeah. <laughs> so another one I had to mention is I've met up with good friend or as you mentioned, my boyfriend, Bobby yeah. G. I've met up with him a couple of times and you want to tell people why? <sighs> Because they're both idiots. <laughs> As Bobby's wife, Tracy, and I both agree on. <laughs> and Jonathan Jossel as well has agreed oh, yeah. on this. Yes. I forgot about it. So they decided that it would be a hoot to visit the worst rated buffets on Yelp. Mm -hmm. And so the first one was like four or five days ago, four, maybe four days ago. So they went and it was like $12 for a buffet. That is a telltale sign right there. That's a deal. They're gonna, if they're going to give you a buffet for $12, something's wrong. And Bobby's going to post video of it, I think. Oh, yeah, he but, is. But, I mean, tell yeah. them how your experience okay, was. Okay, guys. So, in order to recap all of this and be able to see all of this, you're going to have to check out Bobby G's adventures on YouTube. <laughs> so, he's going to be posting two different videos. We visited two different places. And I'll say the names of everything because we've already said it publicly in the videos. And, again, we're not shaming anybody in town. Don't take this the wrong way. What we're doing is seeing if these places are actually as bad as people are saying. Now, you guys know I have a food background, and that's one of my favorite things to do. I visited the worst rated and reviewed restaurants earlier this past year and checked out like some of the worst rated pizza places and some of the places in casinos. And that's on the YouTube side. But Bobby's throwing these ones up. And what we did is I think it was like, it was Wednesday. like four days ago. Yeah, yeah. Wednesday, we went to a buffet called China Star Buffet. Right. And he had told me about these places. He had been to both and he had, didn't have great experiences at both. So he's like, Jay, we got to go. And you know me, I'm like, sign me up. <laughs> but there was a twist to it. He wanted to play a game, essentially. The first one, the yak up or the first one to have to hit the restroom for, you know, whatever purpose. diarrhea purposes, <laughs> you lose and you have to pay. So <laughs> that was the goal. So this place, funny enough, babe, you walk in you pay as you're ready to leave. So you basically just go in, they sit you down. And so I'm looking at, okay, well, how much is this? We didn't know. Then we right. see the sign 12 bucks and we're like, oh, you think scary. I think deal, right? Yeah. So I'm like, all right, cool. This is perfect. Okay. So we go and we start, we sit down. I wait for him to get there. We start checking everything out. And we start testing, you know, the basic foods, the pizza, and then nothing's great. Nothing's really great. There was a couple things like the orange chicken, which was okay, edible. The rice needed some work. And there was like chow mein and stuff. But there was stuff that once we started trying like the basic stuff, we both grabbed a plate and we started picking each other's okay. stuff out to try, okay? What's the one that you both tried? What is the key one? Remember, what was it called? So this one, now mind you, I had picked him out like octopus, right? I had picked him out. He picked me out like some mussels and shit that were like spiced and we were picking out some weird shit. Well, the one I picked out for it, well, we both tried it, of course. So there was something in the buffet line. We don't know what kind of meat, okay? But it was labeled meat in shell. That's it, okay? Just meat in shell. Now the shell is like a clam shell. <laughs> And it's got some sort of meat inside and it's covered with cheese and the cheese is melted. So you really don't know what you're getting. I put my fork into this thing. I couldn't tell you what kind of meat it was. I couldn't tell you what was in the meat. And when I put this stuff in my mouth, it was tangy. It was weird and not a flavor I expected to try. Bobby put it in his mouth. It almost threw up a couple of Twice. times. Yeah, okay. And then that was just the first place. The second place we go to 
is just the other day. It was day. two days later, yeah, yeah. right? It was two and days later. I'm in the car, right? And <laughs> we had just finished doing our work at Circus Circus. And he's like, oh, Bobby's off. We're going to go to the buffet. He's like, do you want to go? I'm like, do I look like I want to partake in your weird ass festivities? Drop me off, please, at the hotel, please. So, he goes, I didn't think you would. I wanted you to go. Hold on, let me finish my story. Okay. So then he drops me off at the plaza. Oh, yes, this is great. Yes. Jonathan Jossel, hey, Jonathan, is outside. Right? And I'm walking in and Julian beeps at Jonathan, right? They wave. And he's like, well, where is Julian going? And I said, oh, let me tell you. And he goes, kiddo, I think that guy might be a little off. You know, like, why would he do that on purpose? And I said, Jonathan, I said the same thing. I said, I am not going with you. Drop me off. You guys do that shit on your own. And he's like, you know, you he, people want to get sick. Why would he want to make himself? And I said, he, and then that's what he goes, you know, he's a little off, I think. And I said, I think you might be right. But. <laughs> so anyways, you go to the second place. So we go to the me. second one. The second one's called Kieran Buffet. It is on Flamingo, just, I believe it's west of the Strip. And so this place was actually a notch above, right? The tables, the whole inside, everything was nicer. That's because it, it cost a dollar more. Okay. Yeah, well, so don't be hate. It was $13 for the buffet. I'm all about deals. <laughs> That's right. So, okay. So we get there and we're like, okay, well, everywhere we walk in the place, there's signs <laughs> everywhere on the food. Okay. Now, when I mean signs, I mean like a paper pink sign that is everywhere throughout the restaurant stating, Please do not waste food. Millions of people are starving around the country. <laughs> this place also has signs that says, if you waste a certain amount of food, you will be charged $5 extra before you leave. <laughs> okay. So they have more signs up of these yeah. rather than actual food labels on if the fucking food. Trouble. Okay. So we go and we check this place out. The food is not that bad. A lot of it, you know, I mean, the worst parts I saw were some of the soup. It had like a layer of film on top that we didn't know what the hell it was, so we didn't touch it. But they had like the dessert area next to the sushi section, right? <laughs> so the dessert area had all these different kinds of cookies, right? Well, all the cookies are still in the plastic trays that they bought them in from the store. So like they're literally just sitting in plastic <laughs> trays and they're like the dollar pack of cookies, yeah. the oatmeal. And so the, the generic ones, I mean, I like them. But so I, that's the only reason I know what they are, okay? I could hit them on the head when I was like, oh, I know those cookies. Oh, so Lord. that was one part of it but then we get all this different sushi that's next to it and nothing's labeled you don't know what's what all the food in the dining area is all got some sort of labels that are faded out and all wrong right so we don't know what we're really getting we're kind of guesstimating well this we sit down the key one of this visit was Bobby's trying some of the sushi and he got one that had like a yellow on top and he's like I don't know what that is and he's like, and I can't stare at it and eat it. I'm going to have to psych myself out. And so what he does is he grabs a glob of wasabi and throws it right on top of the sushi roll, right? And just straight down the pipe, right? Just right. And he's like, <laughs> and then snot's coming out. And he's like, oh, it was so, that was a bad idea, right? Well, he has one more. And he's like, I can't stare at this, Jay. And like, he doesn't want to waste it, right? So then he's got the glob of wasabi. So, yeah. so now he puts another glob on. And this time, after putting that glob of wasabi on top of this egg roll, or the sushi roll, <laughs> he fucking drenches it in soy sauce oh. and just throws it in his mouth. Babe, immediately, he regretted it. Oh, and you I'm can sure. tell. He starts coughing. And as he's coughing, food starts flying out of his mouth. It's so freaking and hilarious i can't wait till he puts those videos up and people ask oh you guys are just doing this stuff for clickbait i find this shit pretty entertaining if i'm being honest like oh he I was excited I, I, oh Julian yeah <laughs> genuinely excited when he's like oh oh yeah you're ready okay let's go <laughs> and, like, and i'm like what are you guys i've been planning this shit for so long like yeah. there's so much stuff i want to do in town and there's very little friends that want to do the same <laughs> kind of shit with me and that bobby g's what shocker, <laughs> shocker. bobby g i love because he's like always game to try food <laughs> good or bad that's what i love about him so bobby thank you for hanging out not this just week. food like for the wedding you guys dressed up as dumb and dumb like he's he's pretty much down for anything. <laughs> you guys are too too 
He's in a pod. <laughs> He's so funny. <laughs> but this episode was more of a loose, <laughs> loosey goosey. We just wanted to get some stuff out, recap some of the moments. I'm trying to think right off the top of my head. I know there's so much. I mean, the other night I wanted to mention. I was outside taking a walk, and for those of you listening to the show, you know what taking a walk means. And so when I got <laughs> back from my walk, I noticed this couple arguing. Remember I told you yeah. the other night, they, I was sitting in front of Plaza, and mind you, oh, what we should mention is the Plaza updates, right? That all happened while oh, we yeah. were here as well. So we'll get back to the, let's, well, let's knock out the short story. <laughs> so this couple's arguing, and so they're out here in front of the Plaza, and Sure enough, they're like, you got two kids and they both have a beer in hand and they're like, oh, it's on the other side of the strip. And she's yelling at They're she's, a little older, yeah, could you yeah, say? The she teenagers, was like, like she's 15, like, 16. Yeah, right. The kids, yeah. Yeah. And so they sat down. She was like, I'm sitting down. It's too fucking hot, right? And so he's like, you can see he's like lost. And he's like, I go, where are you guys looking to go, right? And the yeah. mask guy walking around. Where are you guys looking to go? Well, we're looking for the bus stop. Like, dude, you guys are at the bus stop. Right in between these two big trees right here in front of the hotel is the bus stop. And he's like, really? I go, yeah, you guys are here. Run. There's four different kinds of buses. Like, we just want to make sure you're at the right one, right? So they're good. He's like, man, thank you so much. And I just told him, I was like, it's no big deal. Like, there's, yeah. there's a lot of these bus stops. This place is confusing, especially if you're not from here. He's like, yeah, we're trying to find our way back to the Strip. We've been lost out here for a couple hours. So that made me feel good. But right. We have to talk about the plaza, everything going on here at the plaza that they've announced and everything that's going to happen here coming winter 2023, right? Yeah. And when when Julian came in, he came in on the 11th of June and he spent his first few nights at the plaza. He ran into Jonathan, Jocelyn. Jonathan's like, hey, you need to stay at least one more day. You know, I got a big announcement coming in. You know, I want you to be there. And that was going to be on the Tuesday, the 14th, I think, right? Mm-hmm. And so Julian stayed. And sure enough, this big, big old announcement. And they're going to have a lot of four different things coming to the plaza. Yeah. And, and great stuff. And I said winter 2023. It's winter 2022. I'm sorry. They're hoping. Yeah, they're, they yeah, put yeah. winter 2022 right. on, on the, the banners and stuff outside. And pending, you know, no delays, which construction, construction can do. Right. It just depends how the wind, how the fall and the rain right. and all that stuff here goes. Right. Um, but Pink Box Donuts is coming to Plaza, which will be awesome. That is an actual franchise here in Vegas that is going to be replacing the whole studio 71. 71 downstairs. So they're going to replace that whole area as you walk in with the pink box donuts. This place is beloved by locals. They offer, you it's know. It's becoming very popular yeah, very quickly. And yeah. we've been seeing it everywhere mm-hmm, we're going. Yeah. There's one in Laughlin as well, I believe. And it's basically donuts that every kind of donut you can think of, but they also kick it up a notch with adding, you know, booze infused donuts and right. milkshakes and just going over the top type yeah. of deal. And so that'll be cool and something different that the right. plaza can definitely use. Um, and then right under the center lights, mm-hmm. they're going to do a carousel bar. Right. So which looks really cool. Like yeah. a great place to people watch, great place to hang out. I mean, and I think they, they said they're going to do misters and stuff for mm-hmm. the summer. Right. So Keep you can cool. Yeah. Right. And, and again, everybody loves that driveway. Yes. And I think that was one thing I mentioned. And so there will be a video on top of this podcast coming out about all the updates so I am showing you Jonathan is a part of it and actually a big shout out to Lacey Las Vegas gal who came onto the channel too because we went through and asked Jonathan some questions about the new updates which I thought are really really cool and you know we asked him basically what are some of the most things he's excited about yeah. and he's like honestly this is all a lot coming right, right. now and so well, the it's better to do it all at once exactly. than one yeah, because yes. you're continuously yes. having construction if they're not right. rock it all out at once that's the way to go right. especially because it's all in the front of the plaza happening and so kelly mentioned the carousel bar and that's obviously going to be really cool because they got it planned out lots yeah. of colors lots of lighting out there so that'll be really neat on top of the lighting that's already out there and, and they're going to what do a patio seating for oscars and then they're adding a patio dining area outside for the top of oscars and to actually be able to eat outside and enjoy a meal overlooking fremont street so that'll be really neat and then the last one is 
no smoking casino and they're expanding part of plaza to do a no smoking section um brian christopher is is going to be named for that casino because he's a big proponent of no smoking in in the casinos right. um but that'll be awesome. They haven't really said how many slot machines they're going to put in that section or anything right. yet. But I mean, that's that's a great option because nowhere else on the strip has that yet. Right. Well, and you also have to think on the strip on downtown. Nowhere uh, else yeah. downtown has that. Well, I was going to say Park MGM. Yeah. yeah. Well, and downtown doesn't have a non-smoking casino one. Right. But we were actually looking at what they're going to do. What they're trying to be, you know, the main social media for right. like a casino in town so they're gonna design all that for you know picture friendly stuff all that added to it but what's cool is we were already looking at the construction that's taking place out there like last night i took you out there yeah. for example and guys the first day when they put up this it's wall hilarious right. how this happened right oh yeah 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 well, please so, let's talk about this <laughs> and scott's into this too yes. which i find funny i didn't even realize day this. one they they put up um Plywood all right. all around where the the, the circular entry yeah right. the circular driveway is um, and not you know cover it all up fenced it and then put plywood mm -hmm. just because construction was beginning right and Julian and I were both like oh this is an eyesore yes like it was yeah like I said people and I, I we literally walked by and I said people are going to think this place is closed uh, like if yeah. you be, people that don't know the plaza and they were walking straight on Fremont because it's right at the end of the canopy mm -hmm. if you see plywood you're gonna be like oh that casino's not open right you know I'm not even gonna go in there mm -hmm. literally did, who posted so no what we said is me and you said to I said each I said other, they need to paint it we or something. Like, they got a, I was thinking mural, mural. or yeah, something. Yeah, Kelly was like they got to paint. I go maybe they're gonna do like a mural or something, and because I thought it's a big wall, right? Right. Later on that night, <laughs> as we were playing roulette with Scott, Jonathan had posted some or Scott a few hours before visiting Oscars that night posted uh, the construction update at the plaza and put a picture of that wall, and so he mentioned something like. Hopefully they do more to this wall. I go, that's yeah. funny, Scott. Me and Kelly would just walk by it and we were like, hey, hopefully they put some kind of painting or mural on it and stuff. Jonathan replied, he's like, give me a few hours. There's already things in, in, in plans, right? We woke up the next morning. And yeah, the all the plywood was paint, painted black already. Yeah. And it already looked a thousand times better. Just black. Just, just, just painted black. black yeah, you know, Because right. it, like, it matched Oscar's awning, too. Yes. So it did match the whole thing. So it at least looked like it was part of right. something. Hours right? later? Hours later, there were, um, what are they like? Banners. Banners. Yeah, banners and, giving you an idea of what's coming. And Julian posted those, you know. Yeah. yeah, and they were really cool. Yeah. So um, now it looks like... Okay, it's part yeah, it's of a casino. very welcoming that's, yes. under construction. Yeah, I thought, what night and day. And oh, funny yeah. that as I'm here, I mean, <laughs> it's one thing to be home and yeah. interactive with these guys on social media, but to be here running into right. them and in and and time. And it's funny because you beat Jonathan to, the, to posting about <laughs> these once. things twice. twice. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting you, pissed. You said he commented like, beat me again. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny because yesterday when I posted the pictures of... See what this man can do for you guys? <laughs> <laughs> but I posted the pictures of that like minutes later. Yeah. Plaza posted. I was like, got you again. Yeah, but that's too funny. I don't but it looks great. I mean, it actually it looks, does. you know, like it's part of the casino and doesn't look like, you know, Plaza's, right. you know, boarded up for mm -hmm. the the rest of the year so right. it, it looks way better so it was a great great idea that they had already had mm -hmm. planned yeah they just you know so since you're talking about plans let's segue in a couple other things where we planned a couple things of with the family yes so we checked out a fun place before <laughs> so the first place we checked out is Dick's Last Resort. <laughs> so we take your mom and your aunt to Dick's Last Resort. The kids had never really been and didn't understand the concept either. So, and we've been there. Yeah, we so, had been there. Yeah. My mom and her sister, they're you know, in the mid-70s. They did not love it. They did not want to go out first. I'm like, guys, it'll be a fun experience. And they're like, Denny's is across the way, yeah. right? And so like, we walk in. to Vegas to go to Denny's. Yeah, like, right. Do so, something different, right? And, you know, the surfer, the first thing she does is she throws the menus yeah, at yeah. us, she right? Yeah, throws the menus, straws. Yeah. yeah. And what do you guys my want? mom and her sister look at each other like, what the fuck? <laughs> 
that they were good sports and they and they, they, were, they, they got it yeah. yeah they got it and they're like this is okay like the food wasn't bad for them and it was it was a good time and everybody got a hat except for me yes oh what so let's talk a little bit about the hats I please. Have them here. um i your aunt's hat so her, oh it was your, her, your kelly's mom and kelly's aunt both got hats first <laughs> and kelly's mom said my mom said do your boobs hang low? Do they wobble to and fro? Cause mine do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now my, tell your aunt. Your aunt's aunt, better. <laughs> my aunt, who is in her seventies, says it's a rash. Eat around it. <laughs> <laughs> and it was hilarious because once she looked at it and read it, she said, oh, oh, my God. Like, oh I get it. That it was so oh, good. It Julian was, was so in good. tears. He was okay. in tears. And then she made Julie one that says, caution, choking hazard, small parts included, right? And the arrow going down. And the arrow going down. And then my seven-year-old, <laughs> she, she made him a hat that says, build small like my daddy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. And then, and then my 17-year-old, his, his hat said, still a virgin in the front. But 20 is 20. <laughs> and did I get a picture of Yes, this? Sydney's. Let's see. Sydney said, daddy's favorite financial burden. <laughs> and I said, more like mother's financial burden. So, and Sydney said, I'm independent. I pay for my stuff. Yeah, right. So let's talk about the second place. The second place was a neat experience because we took them to brilliant at the neon museum yes and you had never been i had been with friends prior right and you said you really enjoyed I it re that's one I of my like, favorite things to do my mom and my mom and her sister are older so they would appreciate the older right. Right. signs mm -hmm. and it's had a history lesson with it well they added like a 10 minute mural talk yeah through, right the outside right and we get like so mind you guys, when you go into this thing, you're essentially thinking you're going in to just see the light show. That's what it was like when right. I went. But this time, like Kelly said, there's a whole wall that's painted with a lot of the history. And, and the guy gives like a 10 to 15 people. minute talk about different people right. and what they did, right? Wait, the guy gets like five minutes into it and my seven year old is, turns to me, he goes, I thought you said this was gonna be fun. This is so boring. <laughs> You know, because kids don't lie. Don't they don't. And I'm like, yeah. baby, they're going to turn lights on pretty fun. soon, yeah. right? And I don't really know what's coming because I haven't been, right? And so he's a sport. He just sits on the curb and waits for the guy to finish, yeah. right? And so we go in and he, the guy talks a little bit more about, you know, the history of part of these signs. And we walk around mm -hmm. where the show starts. And I think the show's pretty cool. You know, like yeah. they the, the music goes with the lights and... and about 10 minutes into the show, seven year old goes, it didn't get better. Is it almost <laughs> over? <laughs> and it, it started sprinkling that yeah, night as yeah, well. Yeah, that was weird. And that actually felt good yeah, though. right. I it mean, did it help. didn't start raining yeah. hard or anything, but you know, it cooled it off because it was still like a hundred degrees at nine right. o'clock when we were there. But my seven year old definitely, he was not a fan. He right. was like. And this is one of those things, guys, like I've said it before. You have to be in a somewhat the history or into the neon lightings or just that old school. Yeah, vibe. you want to appreciate it. It's not just right. a ooh, Cirque du Soleil show <laughs> where you're going to be wowed or it's not going to be right. an instant gratification. It's it's kind of like the mob museum. You're going to have to want to know about. You're going to have to appreciate. It. Yes, right. 100%. You're going to have to. Yeah, you're going to yeah. have to have that. You know, because like yeah. same thing. Like we could have went to the mob museum, but my seven year old been like, this "What is, is this?" Right. Yeah. Right. And you know, like I said, probably the best twenty dollars you could spend in vegas yeah if you appreciate that yeah. kind of a deal mm -hmm. you know like uh, i i don't know even know if my like 21 17 year old they were they were good sports they were good sports about it and they didn't say anything but you could tell they were like uh. <laughs> they, i'd rather be zip lining was would yeah. be the caption coming out of their their head you know speaking of zip lining they did get to see a few people zip line all the way up and zip line halfway the way back remember, remember that one guy that? yeah julian recorded that guy he, he one guy did get stuck on yeah. the fremont street experience zip line how about your I had mom, to go get him how about your mom's reaction to gene simmons on fremont oh. street <laughs> If you guys have been to Fremont Street and you've seen Gene Simmons dressed up, you know, in the very high heels and just his 
his G-string, right? We're taking my mom down Fremont and she was a good sport. Like she wanted to see everything yes, going on, right? She did. She gets to him and her face yeah. was to die for. Like people were laughing at her looking yes. at him. They were taking pictures of she her. Was like, yeah. Oh my gosh. And you, you can know? tell when somebody's never been down Fremont. Yes. Right? They got the camera out, they're looking around, they're hooting off. And you can tell she had never been there because of her reaction yes. of seeing this guy. People were it was like, hilarious. Oh my God. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Just continuous fun, this whole experience. And guys, please, we're already at approaching 50 minutes of just recording. Just there's so much to recap and so much to tell you guys coming. Mm -hmm. And the networking, the communications, the people we are making relationships with in town are so freaking cool. There's a guy I met. There's a gentleman I met at the world's largest casino chip and collectible show at South Point that was happening again this recently and when I went over there they had this gentleman by the name of Dustin Marks he was a blackjack cheat in the old days and he was part of the casino because he was a dealer and he figured out a way to cheat while dealing blackjack with a certain amount of people yeah the story's nuts babe and I showed I put a, I think I put a video on social media and I told you about it but this guy was very cool and he was like oh yeah and there's a reason he does what he does now and he's not in the black book because you know he's helping casinos understand what was going on right. back then but yeah he he openly admits to being a blackjack cheap back in the old days I mean there's so much fun connections we're doing and Tomorrow's Fourth of July, so again, in advance, Happy Fourth of July yes, to happy you Fourth and all of your July family. to everybody. Happy Independence Day! Again, guys, I've been having, I, I've been telling Kelly, Kelly, we gotta record. There's just every weekend something's coming oh, up yeah. with meetings. There's been a couple key YouTubers in town, and when I tell you guys what we're doing with the job and what we're a part of, everything will come full circle, and you will see why. Where there's a couple of breaks in between the episodes when I'm meeting these people and how they're going to be involved with what we're doing. So the networking, like I said, this is my favorite freaking part. And being able to show these people what we're doing and what we're a part of, it gets cooler because the reactions are super cool when it comes from locals. Yeah. Because I think they appreciate it a little more. So one of the last things we'll chat about is we did take the kids to do something they had never seen or been to, which was Area 15. That was fun. We took them to what exhibit? Oh, the one we went to, Wink right? World. We yeah. did Wink World with them. And that was really cool. We got to give that lady a shout out, too. Yeah. Because we paid, well, you paid for the kids, and then the lady's like, oh, you can just go with him. Yeah, because, um, so we took them to, to Area 15, right. which they had no idea what to expect, because even trying to describe it it's to hard. somebody is, it's yeah, hard. it's hard. Yeah. You know, um, they walked in, and they saw the different stuff, you know, and... They were like, you know, intrigued. Mm -hmm. And so we had done Week World previously. And so I'm like, this is really one the one I, I want you guys to do. Because mm -hmm. we thought about, um, what is it? Omega Mart. Right. We thought about Omega Mart, but it was like n nine, eight or nine eight or when nine, we went. Yeah, right. And, you know, you to you need truly, time. yeah, to truly enjoy that. Like people said, you need like three hours, four hours, whatever. Um, so, like I said, we... I paid for them to do Wing World, and I told her, I'm like, we've already done it, but we really want the kids to do it, right? right. And we bought their glasses and stuff. And then after I paid, she goes, you know what, you guys can go ahead and go with them. Yeah. And I'm like, really? She's like, yeah, no problem, you know? Yeah. And so that was super cool right. that we got to, sh you know, hey, this is coming, yeah, this is coming, do this, because, you know, we had done it before. Um, <laughs> and they, I think they loved it. They loved, my a seven year old was dancing in yeah, every he room. Loved it, yeah. Oh, he was just, having a great time until you know. we had a pause moment oh. remember this we were like in the third second yeah yeah like the third room i think yeah. right and like it gets like a minute each room is like two minutes long and it gets like a minute and the, the music cuts off and julian's like i don't think that's how it's supposed to end right and the doors open and like everybody's kind of standing there and you have to see security come by with yeah. some like with the three two guys. guys behind us three guys behind us three yeah. guys and you can smell yeah. the weed, yeah. right? They got into one of the rooms and decided it was a bright idea to everybody light up and start smoking weed in one of the rooms. Yeah, you know. And I'm like, and there's there's cameras, cameras in everywhere. every room, and yeah. it says you know explicitly, do not you know right. smoke or drink right. or you know nothing. 
And so then they restarted the room and went yeah. through. But I mean, you could smell it as they walked yeah. them people out and, and like, what a waste. And Julian's like, what a waste of money. Like, yeah. you don't get your money Hope back. You have a great experience, as dumbasses. Yeah. You know, like, why would you do that in there of all right. places? Yeah, but I thought that was interesting. Well, and the kids too, babe, they also had an idea, the older ones, because they had seen some videos on like TikTok about mm-hmm. Omega Mart in Area 15, which I thought was cool. So they had some sort of an idea, but not really right. what we were going to take them into. Yeah, so that was super fun. This one's freaking awesome. Okay, so me and Scott are hanging out downstairs in the casino here at Plaza the other night, and we're just chatting, right? And so he has a, f- a friend that tells him, Hey, I'm a professional roulette player. So we go over to watch him play roulette, right? And this couple is winning, like winning. And I've never seen that. And I'm like, this is interesting. I don't play roulette. We don't play roulette. So I'm like, I'm not playing that. And Scott's like, well, that's the kind of the goal. Jay is like, once you start winning, you know, you start pressing everything and start trying to win even more. Like, you know, and I'm like, Scott, that's not a thing, right? (laughs) Sure enough, this guy does exactly that. Him and his wife are hitting numbers and they're not betting every single spin, right? And he's like, I do something called poaching, which is kind of like every four or five hits, I'll I'll put a bet out. And so, and every now and then he'd hit, right? And so his chip stack was big because he wasn't really losing every hand, betting all the time. So that was kind of what he did. Well, Scott jumps in, and so he starts playing, and so I'm like, I'm watching Scott for like five minutes. Scott hits three, four numbers right, right? And I'm like, all right, I'm jumping in, right? So me and Scott jump in, now we're out playing. Me, Scott, and the couple, her name was Lisa. I wanna say his name was like Josh or something, but they're really, really nice, right? They're like, oh, we love your vibe. I'm like, I have no vibe, I don't know what the hell I'm doing, like, so we're playing. We all go heavy on Black 17. The dealer, Jose, he's got a heavy Spanish accent. And he's like, hey, everybody go 1720, 1720, right? And so we're like, all right, whatever. And so Scott was doing this. This is for you bets only, right, for the dealer. Scott had like three bucks on there. I had three bucks on there. He had two extra dollars on for the dealer. Everybody, the other two player, the couple, they were betting fives. And they had like 10, 15, 20 dollars on there. It freaking hit, right? We all hit. As soon as this happens, we're all celebrating and stuff. A guy walks up and he's like, hey, Scott, how you doing? I'm a big fan of the podcast. And Scott's like, oh, thanks. He starts talking to him. And he's like, can you believe we all just hit right now? Me? (laughs) And he said their name and he's like, and Julian. And the guy looks up at me and he's like, he looks at the hat and he's like, oh. No fucking way. He's like, what are you, really? You're on a roulette table with Scott? And I was like, yeah, this doesn't ever happen, right? And he's like, what are the odds? The two fucking, my favorites are here. And and we laugh so much, right? And the dealer's looking at him like, what the fuck's going on, right? Yeah, who are you guys, right? And so this guy's like, guys, it's my birthday. I'm getting ready to head over Circa to go eat. He's like, but I just want to let you guys know, I really, really enjoy the podcast. I love what you guys do. (laughs) Throws a hundred dollar bill on the table. And he's like, guys, play it. And I look at Scott and I was like, that's a fucking cool gesture, right? I took a picture of the hundred dollar bill. And then I turn around and I come to him like, come on guys, let's take a picture of the three of us. And we take a picture, right? Guy couldn't have been nicer. I, I, I met him again yesterday while he was walking through. He's like, what's up? nicest freaking dude and, and cool. again you i don't ever expect right. i don't and i asked scott i was like have you ever had the, he's like mm-hmm. jay it's happened a couple times obviously with food and drinks and so i was like that i expect yeah. that was like but to give you money like that <laughs> he's like yeah jay it, it's something that when they appreciate you they appreciate you and fuck man boy do we i appreciate that kind of stuff yeah. that was really cool That's to just nice. be a part of yeah. right i was like what and it was just over the top. The dealers at first, the pit boss like, "Hey, no, no table, no pictures at the games." I'm like, "Hey, it's just us over here, right?" And no big deal. But Scott, I mean, was just like, "It's pretty cool." I go, "Dude, all in a hobby, right? This is all a hobby." So again, it goes to show that if you listen to this podcast or any of these podcasts pertaining to Vegas gambling. You're one of us. You're part of this community. And everybody that I met at these meetups and through these group trips and these YouTubers and podcasters, like, I genuinely mean it when I say I enjoy doing this stuff. Okay, and, it was a great time. Yeah, I mean, this is our this is our playground, right? And the fact that 
plaza has the freaking sand dollar now like how many nights have i been at the sand dollar every night <laughs> every night <laughs> it's so he's like what are you awesome. gonna go play i'm gonna be at the dollar i'll be at the dollar and and you know i i'm i'm super excited for the plaza because yeah it's gotten such a good response we've we've ran into multiple strangers they're like i love this yeah. place this place yeah. is so awesome right. so right. kudos to the plaza for right taking the gamble well, you know on it and it's it's paying off like they people love it we've mentioned the other day we were just sitting out playing your sharknado yes yeah. how much foot traffic oh yes in and, out. In and, out. and we're only seeing that side in the casino because there's yeah. still the other door but from the bands yeah the people the s- bartenders are cool great vibe yeah i was yeah. just gonna say great vibe everybody inside there's super nice super helpful or helpful there's a bartender named zach babe i was playing the you slot tried machine. to see him every night the last three nights the, he came out one night i was just playing on the slot machine i didn't know his name and stuff yeah. i just went oh and had a few drinks the next night he walks by the slot machine i was playing he's like what's up jay how you doing man and i'm like Student took the time to remember my right. name. I'm like, right, right, you're on my list, fucker. Yeah. So I went over, got some drinks, and every night been hanging out there. Cool music. I mean, the bands are yeah. freaking all over the top. But to sit there, I watch. I sit in an area where they make the drinks. Yeah. So I'm watching them build these drinks, and it's really cool because some of them are like a bright yellow, and they add the red in on the top, yeah. and then the ice, and it just it looks really neat. And they are crafters. They are mixologists. They, yes, 100%. they are crafters. Yeah, like they are into it, mm-hmm. and they appreciate that. And the security there, just down to earth. Everybody there, and it doesn't hurt when a lot of your friends show up there right because right. we've met a lot of friends there too who just happen to be there playing video poker um the one thing i'm eager to do is try their pizza menu in the sand dollar because it's different from the That's pop-up I, pizza yes. menu so and there's a couple pizzas that look right worth trying out so and i did ask the pop-up guys by the way, shout out to Pop Up and the chef Terry over there, yeah. and Mike as well. But Terry's been really cool as hell. He, yeah. if you guys see him here at the Plaza, he's the chef, white coat, bald head. You will see him. He's always <laughs> walking around with a smile. Make sure you say hi to the dude. He works in all the locations within the food court. Pop Up does a little bit of everything yeah. here at the Plaza, and the guy's just he's freaking cool. down to earth. He stops us every time he sees <laughs> it. Right? Like he's just super chill. So again, guys, I hope you're enjoying this kind of stuff. We had to get some stuff recap get a lot of this stuff and get you guys up to date that way come you know over the next couple of weeks we're going to be dropping details about everything we have how you guys can have access to everything we're doing it's all free and it's all pertaining to vegas and i promise you guys boy is it going to benefit you guys (laughs) so whether you're on your trip or whether you live out here you can use this thing every single day and i promise you you're going to discover something new because i know i am and i've been coming here for fucks (laughs) <laughs> years right so again appreciate all you guys taking the time to listen to the podcast i know it's been a couple of weeks and as you can tell there's just a lot going on so just bear with us as these kind of things are happening right now but from the bottom of my heart i appreciate you guys being patient i'm looking forward to this week i have the haircut i'm taking you guys with me audio wise and video wise we got a couple interviews and a couple guests who want to come on the podcast so there's a lot of stuff coming up down the way so there's a lot of stuff coming down the pipeline so guys tomorrow we will be here for fourth of july that's something we've never done which i'm super excited about i'm looking forward to what happens tomorrow here downtown and then i plan to live stream tomorrow as well so if you guys are around if it's not too late we'll be around and we'll be live i'm gonna do a bunch of giveaways of some shit i've been buying around all week around vegas a few hats i got a new jerry's nugget hat last night we're not Kel- sure why i oh yes we know why yeah. but yeah we even going back to the craps real quick babe you mentioned we went to some other places with sydney yes we took her to play at Jerry's Nugget. Yeah. And then we also took her to play a game that you wanted to try as well, which I forgot to mention, was the glass tabletop roll to win yes. crafts that's on the we strip. on the strip. So I, we had heard a lot of these were taken out of the Caesars property, which is not true because they're all there. Right. I think they were being worked on. Yeah, they added divots. Uh, they in added, the yes, so in the glass. Slide. Exactly right. So yeah. I think we were under the impression that they were just gone. Yeah. And we were like, shit, because you wanted to play it a few months ago. I kept yeah. telling you about it. 
And, and, and I envisioned it differently because then when I got there, it wasn't as fun. No. It wasn't no. nearly as fun as right. I thought or easy. It wasn't easier yeah. either. Yeah, right. Because you know? you're doing it all electronically. Yeah. And there's no camaraderie because, you know, you're not you don't see really what other people are betting. Right. You're not like, yeah, you got right. it. You know, it was it was a different vibe than I thought. Well, and imagine on that game yeah. to that version, the dealers make a lot less tips. Oh, yeah. Because a they're, lot they're like, doing. They're, yeah. They're not involved. As yeah. Much, you know, Um so yeah, I definitely wanted to mention that, and that was one of the fastest hundred dollars we lost yeah. this whole trip so far. Was actually going to try that. So yeah. lesson learned to each his own. Everybody mm-hmm. likes, you know. There was a guy there before us, and he stayed there after us, and he just kept playing. So yeah, and he seemed to be doing well. But boy, that number five has been killing me on the craps table lately. <laughs> oh, five, five just kills me because I don't know. I don't ever bet five, but I guess right. I'm gonna have to start doing it. But I've always seemed to do fields in you six, see eight. Inside, at, yeah. least, at least spread your wings yeah, a little. I'm gonna have to. The five, six, eight, and nine. Five always kills me, son of a bitch. But again, guys, so much fun. We should actually go play some cheap craps tomorrow morning at Downtown Grand. They'll have five. By yes, the way, downtown. Five, yeah. Yes, eleven to seven. They said. Yeah, let's start mentioning any side notes. Yeah, so eleven to seven at Downtown Grand, they do five dollar craps all day long. So yeah. that's every day down there. We learned that when we were yeah. doing all the property searches. Also, yeah. another one I found interesting we learned by going to this week is the other day we went from working at Green Valley Ranch to Circus Circus. Talk about night and day, right? right. But, mm-hmm. but at the same time, I was under the impression that Circus Circus is parking. Circus Circus park, parking in front, guys, charges. But if you go to the back. It's free. It's all free. Yeah. So I was like under the impression lately that all of the property at Circus Circus is charging, but no, not in the back. If you go back and park in by the hotel lobby, all that's backside's free. Yeah. So, and it makes sense that the front right. side is all parking, all charged parking. Yeah. So another one to mention there, free parking, which I really, really like now is a new location that I'd never ever parked at, which would be the Venetian Palazzo area. We've mm-hmm. never parked in that parking garage and man, it's so beneficial to park in that area because that's really kind of where a lot of the stuff we were working on was this week. But I'm usually parking at what is either Tropicana or the Strat. So parking there learned, was nice. You learned something different about the D. Remember when we went and got our our match play for Say Hi to Matthew? Oh yeah, let's talk about that. You know more about it than I do, but because you were inquiring about the right. card. Okay. And parking, right? Oh yes, great one, great one. So. So what she's talking about is we went down to the D last night to get the Say Hi to Matthew match play. Now there's two versions, guys, of this. If you go down there and you take your boarding pass for your flight, they're gonna give you a $25 match play. So if you go down to the Club One area and you ask for the Say Hi to Matthew match play, they will give it to you as well. The only thing they ask is that you have a player's card, so they give you that. So when I looked up to the wall, it said something to the extent of Basically, players of Club One have three to four hours of free parking, and then after that, it's like five dollars an hour. Yeah. And I had no idea. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, crap. and she's like, that's at all properties. So I thought that was interesting, as we don't spend much time there in general. But yes, if you guys are interested, you guys can go and get yourself a free twenty-five dollar match play with the boarding pass or without a boarding pass over at the D. Go check out the Club One area, and good luck to you. So I think that's going to wrap it up for this episode. Again, appreciate you as always listening, guys. We love talking our Vegas adventure stories, the people we come across and the connections we make. That's what this city is all about, man, is word of mouth connections and a handshake goes a long way. I'll never stop saying that. You guys know that. And I'm super excited for the haircut coming up this week (laughs) because Andres, who's the barber was just super cool and down to earth and i'm looking forward to getting their backstory to their whole business guys a lot of fun stuff coming so i hope you guys have got your fix of your vegas stuff over the last few weeks of us not being here and until i chat with you guys in the next one we will be letting you guys know about the job everything it entails who i'm working with and i'm super excited about it Callie's a part of it our daughter's a part of it and there's good reason for everything and again you guys are